did not necessarily be foreigners. So it's a fear that what has happened to Tripura may happen to us. And in the process, you only identify, okay, Chakwa, Buddhist, so he might be doubtful, but chain Christian from Mizoram will not be. That's the most uh, unfortunate. We think about it in Shillong. We often tend to think about it in, in terms of you know, tribals and non-tribals in the hill states, especially. But there is one tribe which uh, is sometimes uh, not thought of at all in this whole uh, discussion, and that is the Chakmas who have uh, had it uh, you know, quite bad, both in India and in Bangladesh, which is where their uh, homelands are. So uh, I'd like uh, I'd request Suhasda to tell us a little bit about <coughs> what happened there. What, and, and what is also a little bit about what is happening now, because uh, I, I don't think that uh, you know, most of us don't really have much of an idea about what happened with the Chakma people and what is the status now? Thank you, Samra. I think it's unusual for me as a human rights activist to speak about the community. And I usually don't do that. I am also seldom seen as somebody who represents the community. So there is a background behind it and I am a human rights activist. Of course, my job involves uh, defending each and every victim irrespective of caste, creed, or nationality. But at the same point in time, of course, when I started writing about it, uh, the Chakmas are possibly the worst victim of the partition. So it's not so much what I have written about the end story or anything, just I think current factual situation of the Chakmas. Uh, as an outsider, as an activist who, apart from defending others, has been defending his own community and I think when this book uh, was published and it was sent to me uh, my son who is uh, about to appear in the final examination uh, this year in the grand final he scanned through it I think the difficulty we had he could not understand that the Chakmas could face xenophobia or actually xenophobia exist in India and I explained it to him he said okay, after the exam I'll go to the book to get to know a little bit more uh, about it. So before I go into the little bit of explanation of the text, what I want to say is basically, uh, it's a very difficult situation. As a Chakma, uh, and of course with the other communities, we have seen that in the Chittagong tracks of Bangladesh, because of the population transfer policy of the government, we have lost everything in the community. Even what is left after the partition. Because from 1979 to 1983, the military government in Bangladesh decided, you know, that to dissolve the insurgency, settle more people from the plains. So that's a reality which exists in the Chittagong tracks. And of course, people fled from persecution during the partition and immediately after the partition. And of course, Tripura had given shelter to the people who were fleeing after the partition. But the fact also remains that the indigenous peoples who are there have been reduced to a political minority. So that's one side of the reality. But the other side of the reality is also that uh, the Chakmas have come from Bangladesh, from East Pakistan, not Bangladesh, sorry, and they will settle in Arunachal Pradesh, which actually did not share any border whatsoever with Chittagong tracks. If you look at today in the map, Chittagong tracks, you have to to reach or not, this where we are settled. Uh, you actually had to, in those days in the 60s, first come to Lusa Hills, which was Mizoram, then come to Kachal Valley, then go to Gohachi, then be taken to Upper Assam, then Nefar. You know, in 1964, the Chakmas didn't know where the hell is Nefar. We were taken there because the government of India felt they needed some loyal people after the Indo-China war debacle that who will protect them. And today, after 50 years later, we are still fighting for citizenship. 23 years after the judgment of the Supreme Court, not a single application in the process as on the So I actually represent both sides. I have seen the marginalization of the community. And also, of course, I have seen the uh, xenophobia, if I want to say, against the Chakmas. 
they noticed. I think it arises, uh, I think in the book I had written, about the misinformation. Because what made news about the Chapmans is in the 80s, it was the Chapmans who fled from the government tracks. So it was the refugee influx. <coughs> Uh, although all of them have been sent back under an agreement, so what you read in the press is about the Chittagong tracks. Then once the Chakmas from the Chittagong tracks left, uh, then of course you only hear about the Chakmas in Arunachal Pradesh who are demanding citizenship despite coming way back in uh, 1964. So that's almost uh, 54 years ago and still not being given uh, citizenship. Uh, and I think, uh, let me just take one more minute. I think when we talk about the narrative of partition, people usually talk about North India, Punjab, how Punjabis have been uh, affected. I think they have a strong case. People usually do not talk about partition of Bengal because it was too long ago in 1905. But I think section of the Bengalis could never recover from that partition. Therefore, actually, uh, if you look, at the 1947, it was insignificant compared to what had happened uh, in 1905. Maybe you did not have the bloodshed in 1905 during the division of Bengal, but it was the borderlines we had uh, clearly drawn. And of course, I the, as strong as the Mgali community, uh, which used to pride, uh, maybe still today, the pride in the what Bengal stings today in the rest of India comes tomorrow. If they could not narrate or they could establish their narrative on uh, what happened to the Bengalis after the partition, for a small microscopic community like the Chakmas, it was impossible. And that's the reality. Because we are small microscopic community, you will not even believe that in this country of 1.2 billion population, in 2011, our entire population was 225,000. And each day, you hear about the stories uh, about the Chakmas. You know, we are in uh, list of the scheduled tribe in Assam in 1950. I think at the point of time there were a couple of hundred Chakmas, our population is 2,000. Even when there is a debate today on NRC, Chakma issue comes up, even though our population as on date is less than 2,000 in Assam. So I think that's why I think uh, it comes up. So I'll just take two, three minutes to, uh, what to say, explain the context. Uh, I think it's our, uh, I mean, I write that no other community in undivided India has been as devastated by the partition of India as much as the Chakmas. The Chakmas and other non Muslims constituted about 98.5% of the total population of the CHD within the partition and sought to be part of India. Yet, for reasons known to the rulers, CHD was awarded to Pakistan. <coughs> then, explaining the context here that the majority of the Chakmas. We, though the majority of the Chakmas is settled in the Chittagong tracks, Chakmas have been living in undivided Assam, including present day Mizoram and Tripura, from time immemorial. Indeed, the advisory committee on the fundamental rights of the Constituent Assembly, constituted to study excluded and partially excluded areas <coughs> under the chairmanship of Sri Adi Thakkar, had only one member from the Northeast India, and it was Snayakumar Chakma. And this uh, Provision, the provisions relating to scheduled areas and advisory tribes advisory council under the fifth and uh, sixth schedules to the Council of India originated from this subcommittee. Today we are considered as foreigners, even though the, you know, the Chakmas had contributed uh, in the drafting of the constitution. Uh, and I'm not going to the history, but I think I just wanted to highlight uh, one uh, more portion uh, how. Uh, where the anti chakma policy was uh, in the conclusions. So in a country of 1.2 billion people, as per the census data from 2011, the total population in Chakmas is still at 2,26,860 persons, with 96,972 in Mizoram, 79,813 uh, persons in Tripura, 2,032 persons in Assam, 466 persons in West Bengal, 106 persons in Meghalaya, and 53,721 persons in Arunachal Pradesh. Even at the state level, their population is minuscule. Chakmas comprise about 8% of the total population in Mizoram, 
3.8 percent of the population in Arunachal Pradesh, 2.17 percent of the population in Tripura, and of course, I'm not going to elaborate the other one. Uh, as the Chakmas had count, Chakma had count is too microscopic to matter in electoral politics. They have been targeted, and the Union of India has failed to even implement the Supreme Court judgments to process their citizenship applications from Arunachal Pradesh. This led to the development of a policy that smacks of racism and xenophobia against the Chakmas practiced by the government of India at the instance of the state government. All the minorities who had fled to escape persecution in East Pakistan and West Pakistan prior to 1971 were granted citizenship en masse. The Chakmas are the only group of people who are being asked to apply for citizenship even uh, today. Uh, and I think in conclusion, well, maybe I was too optimistic uh, because the Chakma population in Arunachal Pradesh, which is cited, uh, I think Chakma population over a period of 50 years increased by 219%, which is equivalent of the local trends, whereas the non tribal population in the state had increased by 1,000%. But still, nobody complains about the Chakmas uh, on target. So, in conclusion, I basically say. The increase of the non-tribal population by 955 percent from 1961 to 2011 in Arunachal Pradesh is not an exception, <laughs> but indicative of the irreversible trends of migrations in the age of globalization. Mizoram will witness more challenges than Nagaland once by way to Sairam, Bondage, railway connection, Karadhan Multi, more than trans transit transport project and operationalized. That BJP came to power in Assam after issuing notification to grant citizenship to minorities who have entered India on or before 31st December 2014 speaks volume about the increasing political irrelevance of the inside and outside debate. Yet, make no mistake, Chakmas who originate from the very areas that the British identified under the Eastern, under the Bengal Eastern Frontier Regulation shall continue to be victims of uh, the insider outside debate in Mizoram and Madhya Pradesh. Targeting vulnerable communities for political purposes is not. <coughs> so I think that's the reality of the Chakmas. And even in this debate on the Citizenship Amendment Bill, people in Mizoram and people in Arunachal Pradesh are protesting only on the ground that the Chakmas are there. Please remember, Chakmas came in '64. There is Supreme Court judgment from '19. Six and there is another judgment to implement the same judgment from 2017. No, the process of the application. There are one lakh twenty thousand chain refugees from Myanmar in Mizoram. They are accepted. So in the northeast, when you identify refugees, migrants, it's based on ethnicity. If you belong to the ethnicity, it doesn't matter. If you do not belong to the ethnicity, of course, it matters a lot. And that's the reality I think uh, we have to live with. And it's extremely unfortunate. Uh, the debate, I think, we talked, uh, which had ended about 40 years back, reignited by the current events for political purposes. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Shahasta. So